Integrated farming is a whole farm management system which aims to deliver more sustainable agriculture. It integrates livestock, crop production, fish, poultry and many others. It is based on the concept that there is no waste. Our farmer today tells me that to him it entails a holistic approach to farming aimed at meeting multiple demands that including securing livelihoods, food security, ecosystem services and making farms adaptive and resilient. Research has shown that this type of farming has the potential to improve farm profitability and employment of up to 100% compared to single enterprise farms. This approach can improve the ecosystem health and improve the income and livelihood security of the growers. Now, let's go to the farm. Hello and welcome to Kilimona Biashara Show. Well, I know I have been talking about soil protection, soil management so much. It's because the season is here and every farmer needs a good harvest. So today we want to explore integrated farming. Are you curious to know what that means? What is done in integrated farming? Then let's go to the farm to learn more about this. Samuel. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I see you very busy. Yes, I'm turning compost here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for my farm. Wow, so this is where it all begins? No, it doesn't begin here. Uh -huh. Because this is an integrated farm, yes. it, it has a place where it, it begins. Ah. So I have to show you where it begins. Okay, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. Your farm is so beautiful. It is. And also there's a river inside your farm. Yeah, this is meant for rainwater harvesting and water comes from that side there and then it comes like this, but again, mm -hmm. it's meant to seep water from the soil like this. So we use this water during the drought season mm -hmm. so you don't suffer yeah. when it's dry. But well, so it's rain harvesting? It's rain fed. So here we don't do, do any, any, any irrigation. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the irrigation that you know. Yeah. We use the rain because that's God given. Yeah. yeah, and what teach farmers that uh, they can grow food any season, any time of the year. Hey, the that's really nice and innovative. That's yeah. Great. Wow. So from here, where do we go to? So, so we have different types of crops here. Maybe you can be able to, to look at, mm -hmm. um, and so so that uh, okay. farmers can also see that uh, they are they are very healthy. Yes. Let's yes. Go. Yeah. So I see somewhere there is a structure right here in the middle of the farm. What's it meant for? Yes, Linda. Unlike the poultry house that we have seen on the other side, yes. this is a unique one because this is um, we, we we want to do some integrated African integrated agricultural uh, project to to look at how we can integrate poultry mm -hmm. and fish and the water that is inside there and see how beneficial will all those three be. And how do you intend to achieve this? Now, Linda, we have poultry here, and the poultry is fed from the plants that we grow here. So, when poultry um, drops the manure inside the water, the manure will fertilize that water, and the, the, it will produce some, some worms. Worms will be, be eaten by the fish, and uh, that water is already fertilized. So, um, it has a lot of nitrogen. The water will, will be used for irrigation in this farm. We'll eat the fish and uh, the, 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 the azola will be harvested, will be eaten by poultry. And this is a unique model farm, but what's its intention? 
What's it intended for? This farm is intended for teaching farmers, educating farmers. We are educating farmers on a system called the Grow Biointensive Techniques. It's a technique that focuses on very small pieces of land, like one acre, two acres, up to five acres, and maximizing the species that are there so that farmers can produce maximum food without wastage of resources, without wastage of space. So we want to reach out to that small older farmer, the small scale farmer that is struggling every day, saying that they are not able to produce enough food from their, from their farm. But if you look at the, this farm, it is small, but we are producing a lot of food. Mm -hmm. I see you've really maximized your own space. But now I'm just curious, how did you, how did this idea conceptualize? How did you decide this is what I want to venture into? And you did it. The way I was brought up made me start this project because I don't want to see families suffering from lack of food. Yeah, that's the, 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 the bottom line. And roughly how many years is that? I started this, this work uh, 14 years ago. That's when I started uh, establishing this centre. And we have trained so many farmers, over 20,000 farmers. Thank you, Samuel. Now you've given us a proper intro of integrated farming. Now, let me take you back to the poultry relation with the fish. So do you grow ozola or what happens? Ozola is an aquatic plant. So when, when you just get just a little bit, throw it in the water, it multiplies very fast because of its reproduction uh, system. You can get it from, it's just aquatic. You can get it from anywhere. Research has been done and it, they have found out that it contains a lot of proteins. So it's an alternative to buying omena or buying uh, uh, bone meal or fish meal. This is readily available, just throwing it in water. You can even do a small space and put um, an, an nylon paper down there and put water there and then just throw a, just a little azola. Within one or two weeks, it's full, just like what you can see here. And then you can just keep harvesting, you dry it, mix with the other feeds and feed your, 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 life, your livestock. Other than depending on uh, feeds from outside. Because in this system, we are saying that if you want to become a grower intensive farmer, you have to practice what we call a closed loop system. That is where you are recycling everything. Even what we are producing from our kitchen, we recycle it. Samuel, now everything here has to be recycled. It has to be recycled. You, you have to, to, to make sure that you are um, putting it back and especially focusing on the soil. Mm -hmm. So with this type of farming, perhaps you can just tell us some of the benefits of having this project. Number one, you get income because of course you'll sell fish. You'll um, get, get your, your, your diet because you'll have fish. This water is fertilized. You'll use that water for, for irrigating your crops during the dry season. And, and uh, you know, of course, this is another way of uh, beating the climate change because you're harvesting rain, rainwater. You are not depending on um, water from outside or something like that. So it has a lot of benefits. Yeah, and your water is clean for, for, uh, for, for irrigation. So you are not eating any chemical. Which fish do you have in here? We have tilapia. Tilapia can do anywhere. As long as there's just a little bit of, of uh, inlet and outlet. Just a little bit of that. Yeah, and, and because this is clay soil, we don't have so much trouble with outlet because water seeps down there. Yeah, because of the characteristics of this soil. Water seeps down there. No wonder I see the crops here are so healthy. Crops are very healthy because we are using compost, compost that has been very well made and, and using water from our source. And, and this is purely organic and this you can eat it just the way it is like that. Ah, and you did it! <laughs> yeah. It's quite healthy though. No chemicals. Now farmers can use this to grow their organic food. Yes, and, and that is the main thing, growing organic foods, not chemically grown foods. You are killing yourselves when you, you, you use chemicals. Samuel, as much as this project is quite successful, I wonder what challenges have you gone through as this particular uh, integrated farmer? Yeah, yeah, of course, Linda. Of course, Linda, challenges are there. The initial stages, where to get manure, enough manure, to fertilize your soil, where to get organic seeds, labor, lots of challenges. But after you have overcome that, after you, your soil have become fertile, all others are gone. All the challenges are gone, including pests and diseases. Here, we have never sprayed any chemical, even the, the, the bio, biochemicals, the ones that are organic. We don't spray anything here. We don't spray anything. Because if you look at this, what do you spray? 
nothing. Even if there is one aphid there and the other, the, another one there, that is that shows that the ecosystem is healthy. If you don't find find a harmful insect in your farm, ask yourselves the questions that maybe you are using uh, wrong approaches because there must be beneficial and non-beneficial. Those are harmful uh, organisms, but eventually they control themselves. That is an organic farm. Yeah, so you mentioned Ali that you've trained over 20,000 farmers. What is the success rate? How is it? How, how, what are their responses? We've done our survey, that's an evaluation. Um, we have found out that at least 50 to 60 percent of our farmers have started um, implementing the organic systems that we train them here. Yeah. And that's a big, big success because bringing a farmer from inorganics or conventional to organic is not easy. It is just like salvation. I see there's an activity happening right behind you. I'm curious to know what's happening there. They're harvesting Azola uh -huh. for, for our livestock. Then let's go help them harvest yeah, Azola. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Okay, so they are dried or the, what is done to Azola? It, it takes around, around two weeks. It takes around two weeks to dry. So now we can mix with other, other livestock feeds. Because that's protein. It's for feeds. It's for feeds. Yes. Uh -huh. So this is harvesting now? Yeah, as simple as that, Linda. Mm -hmm. Just uh, getting uh, a simple tool like this, ah. and then you get it out of the water. Yes. Yeah. I can actually help harvest. It's very simple, yeah. <laughs> and how long does it take now after harvesting? So what happens? What do you do with it? So it, it can take around two weeks to dry when you're using the sun, uh -huh. or you can use a dehydrator, uh -huh. yeah. A, a, a dryer. Uh -huh. Yeah, it takes shorter when you're using a dryer. Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. And then you can mix with the other livestock feeds. Uh -huh. Supplies um, protein. Yeah. It's an alternative supply of protein. Yeah, yeah instead of buying um, omena, omena fish meal, yes. and, and, and bone, bone meal. meal. Yeah. Ah, this is enough for Azola for the week. So this is Azola, which is a source of an alternative source of protein. So instead of buying omena, which is expensive sometimes, and also bone meal, Azola is one of the options. It's an alternative source of protein for livestock feeds. How about that? just joining us today we explore integrated farming systems so earlier on we showed you uh, the relations between fish and poultry farming how about that and then we have this small livestock section i'm curious to know what happens in this particular area and let's join our farmer who is samuel to tell us more about this section samuel i've taken a good break so what's this section linda here we are rearing rabbits or bunnies. We have poultry up here, indigenous poultry, and we are specializing with the poultry called Moshonos. Uh, Moshono. <laughs> Moshonos are, are a chicken that we, without, without uh, feathers here. Where I come from, in Kalenjin, it's called Chepkargergat. Oh, all right, <laughs> Chepkargergat. <laughs> yes, Chepkargergat. That one. And then we have goats there. Uh -huh. And then we have black soldier flies. So that, this, that, that's a small livestock that we have. And, and the purposely, we are rearing them because they are, we can afford to feed them. Feeding them with what we produce. 
we are not buying anything from outside. We are acquiring everything from this farm to feed them. So every livestock that you have here has a reason? They have a reason. Number one, we are eating our meat here. We don't buy meat from outside. We don't buy chicken from outside. We know of antibiotics that are injected in the poultry and all that. Um, and, and then the livestock will produce manure, manure that will be mixed with the materials here and we make compost with it. And, and then, um, of course, for teaching purposes. And for the bunnies that you have here, what are they meant for? Well, with the bunnies is that they, they, they urinate, so we harvest the urine. That urine is very, very important because urine contains a lot of nitrogen. So, so in times of uh, leaching, when it has rained, and maybe like this time there's a lot of leaching going on, we'll be able to get nitrogen from urine and then we now um, put it in, in the soil and the plants will be able to take it up. And how about the black soldier fly? BSF is very, very important also for a person that is rearing small livestock, like chicken or even pigs if they have, or fish. So we, 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 we get maggots or the lava from uh, black soldier flies and then we also mix with what we, we, we produced, the azola and other livestock feeds and then we feed to our, to our livestock. Ah, and that's where azola comes in? Yes, okay. that's where azola comes in because we, need, we want a lot of protein in, the, in our feeds. Yes, and again, BSF produces another manure called frass. So we harvest frass from there and then it's used in our farm. And how do you prepare manure? We prepare compost called cold composts. Cold compost means that uh, the mixture of mature versus immature materials is, is that the, the CN ratio, carbon nitro nitrogen ratio, carbon is way much higher than nitrogen. So we are using a lot of mature materials and very little of immature materials. So that will give us a lot of carbonaceous materials or carbon and very little of nitrogen. Mm -hmm. So for this compost, how long does it take? Compost takes between three months and six months to decompose. But it becomes the best manure or compost because it lasts very long in the soil. Mm -hmm. And since you've put it into practice, which crops are really good when it comes to incorporating with this type of manure that you have? We, we, we practice a system, and this is what we teach farmers, a system called 60-30-10 system. 60% of the total farm, you grow what you call carbon crops or carbonaceous crops. Sorghum, maize, millet, um, amaranthus, those are in the categories of carbon, carbon crops, the 60% total area. 30% we grow uh, what you call special root crops. In another word, they are called cal calorie efficient crops. So those are the ones that come from the ground, like sweet potatoes, like Irish potatoes, like garlic, yeah. And then 10% is vegetables, special vegetables or high value vegetables. So that's simple farm planning that we use here. And that's what we teach farmers to do. So that we'll produce a lot of materials for making compost that will go back into your soil after you have harvested a lot of food from maize, from sorghum, from amaranthus, like that. So I know this is not the last section, so where should we visit as well in this particular farm? Because we want to see everything in integrated farming. Yes. We now go see the agroforestry section and the, 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 the other areas that, are, that we are growing crops. The crops so are. that now farmers can see how crops are growing healthy. Okay. Ah, where the crops are. Yes. Okay, yeah. let's see. Okay. Yeah. Ah, see this, this is the compost you're talking about. Yeah, this about. is the compost I'm talking about. Yes. Which starts here mm -hmm. and then it, it progresses like that. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the, the final product. Yeah, I see that this. The that one is still green. Yeah, here we have arranged materials, mm -hmm. mature materials, immature materials, and then sprinkle a little bit of, of manure from livestock. Mm -hmm. And then again, green mat uh, mature materials, immature materials, like that, until it's on top here. It goes up to around 1.5 meters. Mm -hmm. And then when it starts to decompose, it will go down, of course, like this. Oh. Goes down, and then we'll be able now um, to remove the ones that have not decomposed. And I see even these ones, because we may avocado. Yeah, 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 because they have, there are seeds on top there. Mm -hmm. So these ones are just removed. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that one, how long does it take by the time it gets ready? For around, between three months and six months. Ah. Again, it depends on the materials that you have used. Yes. Yeah, so the CN ratio yeah. is very, very important. And CN is carbon nitrogen ratio. Now from here, where do we go, we to, go to the farm? The see the crops? We can go see the, see the okay, crops. Okay, let's go. Okay. This is nice. 
wow. <laughs> There's something that I've just noticed. Look at this. A farmer is a magician who produces money from mud. <laughs> Come to think of it, it's actually true. A farmer is a magician who produces money from mud. Like literally, it starts from the soil. It's not even mud, it starts from the soil. So, we are here at the crop section. They are beautifully growing here. Samuel, so I see the sweet potatoes are doing so well and you've grown even the indigenous vegetables and they are growing so well. Linda, this is called crop diversification. You diversify your cropping system. That is one way of preventing pests and diseases, which is one of the biggest challenges that farmers face. So if you grow different types of crops, in a way that is called IPM, Integrated Pest Management. You are um, avoiding those challenges by planting different types of, of, of crops. Because there is one pest that likes sweet potato, another one doesn't like sweet potato. So when they come, they fight. So they eat one another, so they control each other. Oh yes, I've even heard that chilies really do well. Uh, when it comes to repelling of pests? Yes, for, and mo mostly onions, they repel pests. So in, in, in every section, at least there's some, some, some onions that will help in repelling. Samuel, would you say integrated type of farming is sustainable? Very. It's a very uh, uh, sustainable practice. Because sustainability for me starts with the soil. And organic farming focuses on soil fertility management. If you, you manage your soil very, very well, fertilize it using organic matter, enough of it. Add more, keep on pumping organic matter. It, it makes your farm become very sustainable in terms of water usage, in terms of pest and disease management, in terms of food production. This is an amazing project. I'm just wondering, has the community around here also benefited from this project? So communities have, have, have uh, appreciated and they are learning a lot. And most of them, more than 60 percent, have uh, taken up the technologies that are here, taken them to their farms. And, and that's, that's our main goal, to teach farmers so that we can grow more food. And we say we want to grow Kenya using our own hands. You surprise me with so much knowledge here. Did you train to be a farmer? Yes, I have uh, trained as a, as a, as a farmer. I have, I have done sustainable agriculture. I have done um, general agriculture. I have done bits of agriculture here and there from the country and from the US, a place called Ecology Action in the US. Um, I've done a bit of um, community development from a university in Kenya. So I hold a degree in community development and a diploma in um, several diplomas in agriculture. So I have a lot of a lot of skills, a lot of knowledge. And thank you so much for sharing such knowledge with us and many other farmers. And I also see it's not just crops. I see there's a food forest right behind us. Yes, behind us here there is a, a food forest that um, incorporates fruit trees, other trees and the food. So it's called a food forest. You're truly a magician, like you wrote there. That produces money from the mud. From the mud, and it actually starts from the soil. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You. Yeah. You're welcome anytime. This is a place for farmers. We call it a farmer's campus. Wow, I hope you've learned something from today's show. It actually starts with soil rejuvenation before you get anything. You have to prepare compost. And uh, earlier on, we showed you uh, the entire project where you have to blend in fish and poultry. There is an integration right there. And also there is um, a lot that comes from that particular relation to the compost, to manufacturing of feed. There is a lot just to cut cost. This integrated farming has actually helped the community as well as so many farmers who've come here to train and gain knowledge from this particular farm. Are you now interested in trying this integrated type of farming? This is the right place. You can also make your way here because Samuel mentioned that this is a farmer's campus. See you again next Friday for yet another amazing show.